and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where deception always gets a good reception. On Lee Mack's team tonight, a comedian who once wrote a book of made-up facts about pandas. Well, that's the thing with panda facts, they're never black and white. It's David O'Doherty. <laughs> A breakfast TV presenter who tells us what the day's weather is going to be like, saving us all the arduous task of looking out of the window. It's a BBC <laughs> Weather's Carol Kirkwood. <laughs> and on uh, David Mitchell's team tonight, a Glasgow-born comic who'll mix delicately spun lies with good old-fashioned Scottish aggression. It's Susan Calman. <laughs> A man who's done almost 490 pointless shows. And if you count tonight, 491. <laughs> From Pointless, Richard Osman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Uh, Richard is first. I have a 40% stake in a prize-winning racing pigeon. <laughs> Lee, if there's one thing I know about, it's buying pigeons. <laughs> so be careful with your answer. Tell me now, Richard, how much do you pay for 40% of a pigeon? We paid £600. Ah, you were robbed. And it is... <laughs> and it's about £70 a month to keep them, which is... Which is £70 fine. a it's... month? Yeah. Wow. That is a lot of trill. <laughs> We don't, feed him, we don't feed him trill. What do you feed him? Uh, IPO. Steroids. Oh, wow. Well, fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 70 just... pounds a month? Steroids. What are you, taking him to Alton Towers? What, what, are you, what are you doing with him? Firstly, he's got to be housed, he's got to be fed, yes, he's got to be in trained. A, in a wooden shack. Yeah. I'm not going to leave he got him a wooden bungalow? shack. This is a prize winner. Well, cool. Why is he a prize winner? What has he won? He won the pre-Calais. Yeah. Uh, and he's won some local things, but that's the proper deal. Pre-PRIX. Ah. How many pigeons were in the race? It's about 450. It's, something, it's less than 500, but more than 100. It's oh, quite, come it's on, lot. 500. The sky what? would be black then with pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Germans, they're back. <laughs> ah! <laughs> they're released in Calais and they race all the way to? Well, they, will, they, they race home. And where's home? Essentially, well, his is up in Lancashire. Right. What's the pigeon's uh, name? It's called Cobbold Joe. Cobbold, C O B O R D. Cobbled, Cobbled, Joe. Cobbled, Joe. Cobbled Joe. It's because the original, as you know about racing pigeons, right? Oh, I do know about racing pigeons. You know Toddy pigeons. Cobbled? <laughs> yeah. Toddy Cobbled was the, was the grandfather. Yeah. And so, the, you know, we chose that name. That's nice. Mm. So is that names? true? Is there a pigeon called Tolly Cobbled? I don't know. <laughs> you said you You're know mixing about me up with someone from a Hovis advert. <laughs> Are there any distinctive markings? So, uh, just if I uh, there were some pigeons there, say Trafalgar Square, I would be able to go, oh, that's Cobble Joe, <laughs> down down in London for there the sales. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I, I would struggle to uh, to choose her out of a pigeon parade. Really? But, you know, oh. her and she and she's called Joe. Yeah. So is it Joe with no e? Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Show up for Joanna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have this. Yeah. I don't think lady pigeons do the racing because they would be pregnant some of the time. Yeah. I'll tell you what, she better not be. Uh, <laughs> it was only a cuddle, wasn't it, Richard? <laughs> <laughs> do you go and watch the... Do you go and let them... When they go off, do you watch it? I have seen the pigeon race once. Yeah, well, How I've much of the release, race did I've you see? I've seen the pigeon release. You've seen the release. Have you ever seen a pigeon land? Yeah, yeah, I've seen You were there when the pigeon land, yeah. landed? <laughs> no, hey, I, You've never seen a pigeon land? I, right, I've seen a pigeon land, yeah. Yes? <laughs> but not, not under racing condition. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? You've just seen a pigeon land and it's spare time. Yeah, exactly. So you've only ever <laughs> spared <laughs> most of it. Yeah. So what you've said is It'll you've seen a... your pigeon take off, yeah. but you haven't seen your pigeon land. I have seen Does my that pigeon... mean your pigeon's lost? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think when a racing pigeon lands, it's any different than a normal No, exactly. Oh, wrong. They don't get skid right to the shed and go, whoa, I was going fast. It, ra it raises its wings as it breasts the tape. That's what it does. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's yeah. time to decide, okay. Lee. What Carol are you going to say? It's... I think it's true. You think it's true? I, I think, yeah, OK, uh, not true. No, let's say lie. I get confused if you say not true. <laughs> it is a lie! You think it's a lie? Uh, uh, Richard, the pigeons, the racing, Cobble Joe. Is, truth or lie? A lie. Uh, oh! 
Yes, it's a lie. Richard doesn't have a 40% stake in a prize-winning racing pigeon. Uh, Carol, you're next. I was rumbled at a dinner party after serving up a shop-bought pie and pretending I'd made it myself. <laughs> oh, David. Right. What was in the pie? Steak and kidney. And what shop did you buy it from? I bought it from a local butcher. Did you make a big deal of saying, oh, look at my homemade steak and kidney pie, isn't it lovely? Yes. Unfortunately, I did, yes. Oh, oh. Did, did you... I waxed lyrical. And who were the people that you were trying to impress so much that you were homemaking, but you didn't know well enough to say, I just bought this from a, from a nice They were butcher. the parents of a good friend of mine who had been really kind to us, and I wanted to do something nice what, for what, them. What, what repay them by lying? <laughs> <laughs> How did they find out? That's yes. the question. That's the well, important issue, Carol. This was actually quite a bit awkward because we were all sitting there having a lovely meal, beautiful smells. I was saying, I'm so glad I've made this because I know steak and kidney is your absolute favourite. So, knife and fork in. How surprising. This is chicken and ham. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Were you tempted to just go with it, pause, and then go, well, well how do you make it? <laughs> What happened when they realised your deceitful ways? Well, I had to really lie some more. <laughs> and I, had to think, I really <laughs> thought you were going to say, come clean. <laughs> no. Lie some more and say, I'm afraid, do you know one of the first signs of Alzheimer's <laughs> is thinking you're having chicken when, in fact, it's steak and kidney. It's a terrible thing. It means you've basically only got hours of consciousness left. <laughs> So what did you say, right. Carol? Well, I said, because they had thought that I'd cooked these, I yeah. said, well, I made a big batch of pies at the weekend and I made some chicken and ham and I made some steak and kidney oh, and I froze good. them all. That's ah. good. I took out the wrong that's ones. That's very good, actually. That's very good. Yeah. off our tongue. Oh, my God. <laughs> really? We have nothing to fear yeah. from climate change. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll just tell us what we want to hear. <laughs> it's all fine. Yeah. If you feel like you're drowning, that's in fact, it's a lovely sunny day. <laughs> so, David... What are you going to do think? You think? Yeah. Well, I think it's genuinely, as it's hard to believe Carol would ever lie, but she's lying one way or another. Mm -hmm. So is she lying yeah. today or did she lie a long time ago? Mm -hmm. I prefer to think that she lied a long time ago. Yeah. In which case, she's telling the truth now. Although actually her lie now would, to be fair, be mitigated by the fact that that is the point of this game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be devastated because... I've, I've, I've watched Carol and loved Carol for some period of time and I'll be slightly devastated and I'll have to take the shrine down that I've got in the house. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take that shrine down. She probably is telling the truth in that yeah. she, she lies. Don't, she don't throw the shrine away, by the way. Well, we can have a little chat about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, David, you think it's the I truth? I think we think it's true. You think it's the you truth? Right, true. Carol Kirkwood. Was it the truth or was it a lie? It was... The truth. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. Carol was rumbled at a dinner party after serving up a shop-bought meal and pretending she'd made it herself. Susan, you're next. <clears throat> the day before I need to make a journey, I often make the journey so that when it comes to making the actual journey, <laughs> I'll know what the journey involves. <laughs> wow. And uh, just how far have you gone on these journeys? Uh, probably driven an hour from from from, from from where I live. If it's possible for me to do it like that, I mean, yes. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> it's strange. It's got, <laughs> it's got to be possible. It's not like if I'm going to New York, I'll go the day before <laughs> and come back. This is journeys that I can make. I would say in about an hour's drive radius. It's always driving. Bus. You wouldn't do it on the train. Oh no, I would do it on the train. I, I've done it on the bus as well. I've taken the bus to make sure where the bus route goes and the bus stop is. Well, you don't is... trust that the driver knows. <laughs> you no, know, it's, it's me. I, I need to know where I'm going so I can I can. Well, you don't on a bus. He will just do it. You just sit back and relax. No, but I think Susan's saying that there are certain things you have to do yourself, even when you travel by bus, like. Get on the bus. Yeah. Get off the bus. At the right bus. And, get, right. and also, get on the right bus. That's, yes. There's, there's more than one Sorry, bus. You, I don't want to sound totally working class. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us, Susan, if you would, the last time that you did this. It was probably about uh, two weeks ago. Right. Uh, I had to go to a uh, meeting somewhere I'd not been before. Right. Where? And a self-help group or a meeting? <laughs> 
You were going for self-help about stop being so anxious about going for journeys, and you yeah. even wrecked that. Yeah. There and must have been quite a few of you hanging outside the meeting place. <laughs> right yeah. So I drove from my house to the location, looked at what the parking restrictions were, so I could have the right change with me. So I was completely relaxed if you the were, next if day. You, if you know for a fact that you're going to do this, you're going to go the day before. Yeah. Do you not the day before that? Think tomorrow I've got to do that thing where I go the day before and then do it that day. Yeah. Susan, this now makes sense because didn't I see you yesterday? <laughs> Just sniffing around outside the studios. Yeah. <clears throat> Did an event happen in the past such that you once arrived somewhere and went, Oh, I wish I'd come here yesterday and I could have foreseen this terrible situation? <laughs> like when JFK was shot. <laughs> by that. If only I'd been yeah. there He'd gone the, the day before he didn't know when to duck. <laughs> it's very rude to be late for things. Is that at the base of this? That, I'm paranoid that, about people the thinking I'm rude or you, in any way, yeah. you know, deceitful, like Carol. <laughs> <laughs> so... What are you thinking, then? It sound, does sound plausible. When you, when you die, you'll have only lived a third of your life. Yeah. The yeah. other two-thirds was a recce. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't think it fits. Uh, yeah, I think she lives life by the horns. Or what it, whatever that is. Right. <laughs> Lie? Truth. Ooh. Um, I would say... The truth. You think it's the truth? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just... I'm practising. I'm, I'm going through what, what <laughs> I'm going to say in a minute. That wasn't my answer. OK. So what are you going to say? It's the truth. It's the truth. Susan, truth or lie? It is a... Uh... The truth. Ah. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, the day before Susan needs to make a journey, she'll often make that journey so that she knows what that journey involves. <laughs> right. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Ian. <laughs> What is Ian to you? Well, this is Ian, and to frighten a teacher, we once hid a ram inside a classroom cupboard. <laughs> Lee, how do you know Ian? This is Ian. He is the supermarket delivery driver who accidentally trapped me in the back of his van and drove me to his next drop-off point. <laughs> and finally, David, what's your relationship with Ian? This is Ian. He is a skydiver who got blown off course and almost knocked me off my bike. <laughs> right, there we have it. Uh, Carol's sheep prankster, Lee's accidental abductor, or David's diverted skydiver. Uh, David Mitchell and team, where are you going to begin? Um, well, <laughs> right, well, Carol, let's start with the, with the ram in the cupboard. Um, <laughs> oh, the old David Mitchell chat up line. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, wh why did you put a ram in a cupboard? Well, Ian and I went to school together in the Highlands and often you would see the sheep and the rams just, you know, meandering into the school grounds. Yeah. And this particular day, one came in. So uh, the ram wanders into the school grounds? Yes. But, and you think, oh, that's fine, it'll be quite docile, and I, I dare say it'll agree to get into a cupboard. <laughs> well, what happened was the teacher was late. He was quite often late. And we were in a wee porter cabin out the Are back. You're saying of the, the teacher school. was a drinker? <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, he was late, so we thought it'd be quite funny, because he was late, just to put this ram in his cupboard so that when he came in, the ram would be mad and come rampaging out. Does Ian look like the kind of man that would grab a, a ram and drag it into a cupboard yeah, he does. for a laugh? <laughs> <laughs> he does. He looks yeah, like he a really kind does. of a devil. And I think Carol, being attractive and beautiful, would have done that whole... Oh, let's just put a ram in the cupboard. Yeah. <laughs> and Ian would be like, yeah, I'll show you how to put a ram in the cupboard. <laughs> so when the teacher eventually arrived, how long was it before he went to his cupboard for a little look at his possessions? And, and what happened? It would have been about ten minutes. Ten minutes. And, of course, we were all sniggering in sniggering. the class. He opened the door. Opened the if door. Andrew Ram came rampaging right out of it. Is that rampaging. where the word rampaging yeah. comes from? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's when they're trying to contact a ram in the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, the... 
<laughs> Who would you like to quiz next? Um, David, could you t describe uh, how Ian, was it nearly hit you? Yeah, skydiving. I mean, this goes back to 92, and my, my family have always been involved in the Scouts of Ireland, and so I was, the, the big jamboree was in Wicklow, which is just outside of Dublin, and I was on a tandem bicycle with my aunt, who's one of the heads of Scouting Ireland, and we were heading uh, towards the jamboree, and they were launching a comic book character to remind kids not to start uh, fires in forests, and he was called uh, Fire Dog, and his catchphrase was, don't start a fire, woof. And <laughs> he, for the launch, they decided in the jamboree, they were gonna parachute uh, Fire Dog into the middle of the, of the jamboree, and we were um, on the, the <coughs> tandem, heading towards it with our little scouty ties on. Can I just check, Fire Dog, he says, don't start a fire, woof. He said, don't start a fire, woof, or don't start a fire, woof. <laughs> This is actually quite easily solved immediately with a demonstration mm -hmm. because my understanding of skydivers is they have a really good core muscle. So essentially, if we do that bit from Dirty Dancing, we you, you actually didn't get up. any taller so when you stood up. <laughs> <laughs> that was the oddest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen anyone stand up and remain the same height. Yeah. That was shocking. If I just run towards you like Dirty D and you just lift me up like the end, then you'll be a skydiver. And if you don't do it, I'll be really hurt and you're <laughs> dead. So... Likewise, in a minute, I'm going to ask you to shut me in the back well, of a van. I was just going <laughs> <laughs> to... So, what, what, are you, what are you planning to do? <laughs> I'm seeing whether or not he looks frightened by the prospect of me running towards him. And he's got to lift me he up. He does look a bit frightened, yeah. <laughs> Also, Rob also looks frightened. <laughs> what if the end of my story is that, and then he whacked against the wall, his legs shot off, and he had to have legs made of glass? <laughs> is that the end of your story? No, no we're back no, to plan A. Plan A. <laughs> How far away from the jamboree were you at the, po at the point of impact? Oh, well, oh, sorry, near impact. He had just missed the landing area by a few fathoms. And <laughs> sorry, it was an it was an aqua jamboree. <laughs> we swerved, we avoided him. He went into a hedge, and we pulled him out. I was well, I was fourteen or fifteen at the time, and my aunt and Ian got talking, and that is why it's nice to have my uncle Ian on the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is. Oh, nice. So your, this that was a hell of a landing. That's a, that was a bum shot. Yeah. Your aunt met That's her fun. husband when he nearly hit her dressed as a dog. <laughs> right, what about Lee? So, Lee, how did you accidentally get shot in his van? What happened? As you will know, that when the man who comes from the supermarket delivers your food, he delivers them in like a plastic box, mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? So he leaves the box and he goes into the kitchen and he drops off the food and... What I decided to do is that I'll, I'll help, right? He brings the last box. I said, is that it? He said, yes, this is your last lot. Puts the thing, gets the bags, goes into the kitchen. Mr Nice here picks the nice plastic things up and takes them to his van. Oh, and God! So I go yeah. into the... <laughs> It's so like, this, is like the start, this is like the start of an episode of Casualty, isn't it? <laughs> so I go in, and as I put them in, I look to my left, and something catches my attention. A lamp post. No. And it's snowing. <laughs> no, no. And there's a form. <laughs> no, no. A little thing catches my eyes. Believe someone it or not, has, someone has looked a ram in the back of the van. <laughs> <laughs> it was, believe it or not, the thing that caught my eye... I don't believe it, was, by the way. ...was, was a slightly ripped box of Cocoa Pops. And I thought, just for a minute, I thought, as Ian just had a little bit of a, like I would do, I'll have a little snack on route. So I just, I just walk over to it. Now, as I walk over to it, it's only a couple of steps, and I'm now hidden behind a spot oh, you are kidding of me. food. That's you know, the, the box of the food, they haven't, they haven't yet been delivered. And at that moment, I hear the noise of the door shutting and the little handle turning. So why didn't you uh, call out? I did. What, and he didn't hear you? No. What, over the noise of a van engine? No, it's not, not very just loud. a van, the noise of Howard Jones on Magic FM. <laughs> 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 it was blasting. Why did you, you try? Yeah, I'm going, help, help! Why did you going, bang on the panel? <laughs> anyway! Oh! Anybody, anybody, anyway! <laughs> what was the name? What was the name? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might not be true, but I've got it. 
it was dramatic. <laughs> So, uh, so uh, we, we do need an answer. Is Ian Carol's sheep prankster, Lee's accidental abductor, or David's diverted skydiver? The key thing is I don't want to be fooled by David O'Doherty. That's the key. Look at him. Look at that. <laughs> Do you remember, you know, in the brownies, you had the brownie promise and all that. So, do you remember anything from the, the your scouting days, your it promise was, or anything? It's different in Ireland. The scouts don't have anything that you would possibly remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, no promises, no, no value system, <laughs> other than if you see a dog going to a hedge, you marry it. <laughs> I would say Carol. I think I. I think it's you say David. Carol. I think, yeah. it's, I think it's David. <laughs> you you say Carol. You say David. I think it's David. So you're so going there go with, with, with David. We're going okay. with David. Uh, <clears throat> Ian, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Ian. Carol Nye, <laughs> fighting the <laughs> cheetah <laughs> by hiding around in the classroom <laughs> cupboard. Yes, Ian is Carol's sheep prankster. Thank you very much, Ian. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. We will start with... It is David. I once sent out 30 professional photographs of myself to try and get an agent. I got just one reply advising me to destroy all copies of the <laughs> photographs. <laughs> what, um, David, what pose exactly were you doing in the glossy, in the glossy print? Uh, I mean, I, I thought a n normal, dignified, at the same time, <laughs> hilarious and talented one. Show me. Yeah, can you I, do it? No, I think I was... Uh, I think what it was... Do it. I, th I think maybe <laughs> in the picture, mm. my mouth looked a bit wrong. Mm. You know, maybe it was a bit sort of. <laughs> Did I ask you why know, you or maybe. But you didn't bother to change it. It wasn't like. <laughs> and when was this? What period are we talking about? It was uh, in the 18th century. <laughs> uh, in the uh, <clears throat> mid late 1990s. What kind of places were you sending them to? Um, or did you just leave them in phone boxes around <laughs> London? <laughs> <laughs> How were you dressed in the photograph? Was it a casual or was it a smarter look that you went for? I'm guessing I think smarter. Smart, I, well, it's just in case he was wearing a leisure suit. Maybe it was the, it was the uh, late 90s. You what's know, a you leisure know? suit? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's that a sort of zip-up thing that you can relieve yes. yourself okay. in? Uh, yes. <laughs> So it's what they'll be wearing in the future. It's just so convenient. <laughs> just get in and whatever happens, it's fine. <laughs> Did this dent your confidence, David? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think, I'll just get some more done, but this time without the stovepipe hat and the cravat. <laughs> I, I don't think I immediately got some more done. I mean, I have subsequently had other photos. You got your confidence taken. back? Yeah. So, what do you think? Do you think that could be the truth? I think it's true. Yes. You do? Yeah. I think it's true. 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 I think it's true. true. David, truth or lie? It is true. Oh. oh. True. <laughs> that, that. Oh. It's true. David did once send out 30 professional photographs, but was advised by an agent to destroy all copies. Next. <coughs> it's uh, David O'Doherty. Possession. Ah, there's a box under the desk. Just pop the box on the desk and then there's a card inside it. Before you take out the possession, just read the card, please. This is one of the pairs of leg warmers for birds that I have made. <laughs> I would have brought more, but birds are using them. <laughs> Could you show us these leg warmers? <laughs> I live uh, beside the canal, and the uh, the swans are very unhappy around there. Dickety the swans? The <laughs> You've tried to put a leg warmer on a swan. <laughs> he hasn't tried to. He succeeded. How the hell do you... a swan? <laughs> Feed it over the webbing, and he doesn't get crushed. Got a great 
pink. Yeah, pink on us. Everyone um, knows about this, but if you befriend the swan, yeah. the first thing you know you befriend the swan when the wings go up like that, and then generally the next thing they go like that, as in make make me leg warmers. That's it. <laughs> They for swans? David, they would break your arm if you went near them. And Famously. Oh, Famously. No, yeah, That's no, what they no. do. <laughs> they break your arm and then the no. queen eats them. Yes. <laughs> How do you get them over the feet? Right, got... if, you put, if you put your hand like that and then yep. try, yep. try and get it over there. <laughs> Like O.J. Simpson, yeah. stick it on there. That's yeah. a swan. That's a swan. Yeah, that's a swan. With yeah. the swan, it's all about authority. So watch this. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, that, that web. That that's web. no good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, that's going to hurt the swan. You've just ripped through no. its webbing. <laughs> you know when you said swan at the beginning? Yeah. Did you mean sparrow? <laughs> <laughs> David, it's time to take a guess. I mean, I don't know which way you're going to go on this. <laughs> maybe a swan could be able to slip that over its foot, and maybe a swan would derive tremendous warmth from this incredibly thin and flimsy <laughs> and short piece of material going an inconsiderable distance <laughs> up its really rather long leg. I think it's true. Don't say that! <laughs> Sort of it, that's what happens to your mind in this game. You say, and you start thinking, oh, yeah, of course, the, the fact that he said swan and it seems impossible <laughs> is exactly what's so it's plausible really about it. <laughs> if you people don't start taking this a bit more seriously, I'm going to bring my Uncle Ian out here again. <laughs> so what are you going to go for? I think we're going to say lie. Lie? Um, and it's a lie. I'd just David like to say, Rob, yes. if it's true, yes. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> David, truth or lie? I'm afraid my tale of swan leg warmers is a lie. <laughs> oh, thank you, God. Who would have thought it? Who would have thought it? Yes, it's a lie. David doesn't make leg warmers for birds. And that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that David's team have two points and Lee's team has four. Hey. <laughs> but, of course, it's not just a team game. My individual liar of the week this week is David O'Doherty. <laughs> yes, David O'Doherty. He's made the show like a massive bed and lied in it. Good night. <laughs>